Today I'm going to show you how to cool a CPU with a Peltier plate. Now what this is, is this little 12 volt plate, if you heat it on one side and cool it on the other, it will actually create electricity. However, if you pump electricity through it, one side will get extremely hot and one side will get really cold. This is used in a lot of different chillers and air conditioning tutorials and a lot of different things. It pretty much uses the law of thermodynamics to create or take in electricity and create something cold or something hot. So what we're going to do is we're going to be putting the cool side down on the CPU and then we're going to put a heat sink on the top where it's hot to draw out the heat. Essentially air conditioning our CPU. Now we do need a lot of different things for this tutorial so I'm just going to cut, I got everything here on the table, I'm going to just try to bring it to the camera and show you what you need. Obviously you need a motherboard CPU that you're going to be doing this on. Uh, you do want a fully functional heat sink, you want the Peltier plate, you want Vaseline that we're actually going to put on the board because since it does get cold it does create condensation, we don't want to short out the board. You also are going to want one of these little adapters because what we're going to do is we're going to actually draw power from the power supply to the Peltier plate. And I'm going to be using a secondary power supply. You really don't have to, but it is going to draw a lot of power from your power supply to keep that cool and pump power through it. So to begin, we're going to put Vaseline on the motherboard. Now obviously you want to do some testing to figure out which is the hot side and which is the cool side. Usually wherever the text is, if there's any text on it, that's the cool side and the hot side is the other side. So since our motherboard is prepared, we're going to go ahead and take the little adapter. Just going to cut the ends off here. Okay, strip the wires down a little bit and then just twist them on. Red to red, black to black. I'm probably going to use hot glue or some type of tape just to secure it. I just realized I'm out of electrical tape. So I'm going to have to use scotch today, which is fine. It should work for our purposes. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to test to see which side is hot and which side is cold. Um, so the one I think is hot, I'm going to go ahead and put that on the heat sink side so it has somewhere to transfer heat. And we're going to be putting thermal grease on there and placing that on there. And then I'm going to just kind of lightly touch this to see if it's cold or if it's hot. Because you don't want to do this very long because if you have it configured incorrectly, you're going to burn out the plate and the plate is useless. Everybody's afraid of thermal grease and thermal paste. Just wash your hands afterwards. It's not a big deal. And that is exactly a perfect fit for that heat sink. That's awesome. Okay, I'm going to flip this on. That actually got really cold really fast. That's awesome. Wow. Okay, on to the motherboard. Make sure that's lined up good. Ok, 
Okay, let's add all the other connections and take this for a test drive. Okay, that was a lot easier than I expected. So I'm gonna turn on both power supplies, the one running the thermal plate, Peltier plate, and just making sure that that's lined up okay because I don't have them screwed down, and the one running the computer. Hopefully this will work, but we will see. Turn on the Peltier. help if I plugged in the computer, right? Here are the temperatures with the plate. And here are the temperatures without the plate. So we had some interesting results with and without the plate. Um, to me, just using the machine itself, it seemed like it only took it down anywhere between 5, 10, maybe 15 degrees, which is a significant improvement, especially if you're overclocking. Um, however, the extra power needed to actually power the cooling unit and also having to worry about condensation. Honestly, I would recommend an enclosed water cooling unit or a better fan and better heat sink versus this. But this is a cheap way to make an old computer cool down and run a little quicker. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to post them below. And if you like this video, please feel free to like, subscribe, and share. And have a great one.